Hello and welcome to Somerville Media Center Live for April 9th, 2021. This is the state delegation update with Senator Pat Jalen. Senator Jalen and I have some very, very special guests with us today. The subject of today is Somerville High School students and how they fared over the course of the pandemic. I'm gonna ask each of our panelists today to identify themselves and give a little bit about where you are in the high school and what programs. Why don't we start with Jao de Oliveira. Hello, my name is Jao de Oliveira. I go to the Somerville High School, but I also am here by the name of the LIPS program. Thank you, Jao. Kate Johnson, welcome. Hi, my name is Kate Johnson. I'm a junior at Somerville High School and I am part of Somerville Positive Courses. Thank you, Kate. And Jace Conley. Hi, my name is Jace Conley. I'm a freshman at Somerville High School and I am here from Teen Empowerment. Teen Empowerment. We do business with Teen Empowerment at the Media Center. Welcome to all three of you. Senator Jalen, I wanna first thank you for uh, organizing today's show. I think these are three very important voices for us to hear from. You know, over the course of the 13 months, you and I have done shows that have involved the medical profession, government, um, uh, community groups, everybody who's, who the pandemic has touched. Um, but I think it is highly appropriate that we hear from our own Somerville High School students and their experiences during COVID and what the future may bring for them. Senator Jalen, why don't you take it over and start with some questions for our panelists? Well, I just wanna say, I'm, I'm really happy. I think people, there's a lot of people talking about education and talking about kids, talking about schools, um, and not too many people are, uh, uh, young people's voices are being heard in that conversation. So everybody's talking about how about learning loss and how far behind you are. Um, and yet you are people who each of you are leaders uh, in your generation. So but each of you've been identified. I learned about you all through Lovely Heller, um, part of Somerville Cares About Prevention. And uh, she reached out to youth workers and so I would like to hear uh, from each of you um, both about your experience in school and of course life is a little more than school. So what else have you been doing in this past year um, and particular not just about the programs that you're in, you're each in a different program uh, that helps you prepare for leadership and recognize you as leaders. So I don't know how we want to start. Do you want to go and I think Jace said uh, their internet is unreliable. So maybe we should go with Jace to start before it cuts out. Jace, could you tell us about yourself, your experiences and your work? Um, so I, myself, like me as a person. You and, okay. and people you know. Yeah, um, well, I don't know, I'm just like, I just feel like I'm just all over the place with who I am, um, but I'm working with teen empowerment and it's just really like a nice environment and just the people are so nice there. Um, and it's like have nice to have that like place to go to. Um, and it's the work that we're doing, I think is also really cool. Um, but also just school, I, I don't really know. It's just, I like school, um, just like seeing people, I guess. So that's pretty right much. Now you're not, in, you're not physically in school. So what is yeah. it like for you um, studying online? And I assume um, empowerment is online. Yeah. Um, teen empowerment, we're actually going back like in person, like masks and social distancing and stuff like that. But um, and school online, personally, I kind of like it because I can, it's just, I can just focus better. And it's not really like, it's not, there's not a lot of distractions and I can kind of just like, I don't know. It's just easier for me to do work. Wow. Even though you enjoy seeing people, you like the, the atmosphere of being. Yeah. 
Yeah. Learning just as much as you would in school if you were there physically? I think I'm kind of, well, personally for me, I'm learning a little more than I would have if I was in school. Well, that is the kind of thing I have never seen in the newspaper. So thank you for sharing that. No uh, problem. So let's, do you want to say a little bit about teen empowerment before we go on? What you do? Um, right now we're just creating a mural um, and we're just taking different ideas and different like topics that mean something to like each of us and we're putting it into the mural and yeah. That's pretty much what we're doing. And where is that? Where is that? Where are we going to put the mural? Yeah. I, I'm not really positive exactly where we're going to put the mural. Okay. Um, I, I don't remember. OK. And how about Joao? Um, you, you want to know more about the LIVS program? Well, I'd like to know about you and LIPS and school. Uh, what this what this year has been like for you? Well, this year has been somewhat, I would say, a difficult year in some aspects. Um, physically, I would say it's better. It was better for me to have like online classes because then I wouldn't have the need to go to school and like go up and down the stairs or just like walk around and lose myself inside the big building and I would just need to stay at home with like the internet but the problem is the internet or the random events that may have during the classes for example interruptions or sounds of neighborings making sounds child screaming and things like that so it's sometimes it's a little bit difficult here because you cannot like put that, those types of events into the equation that things will be okay. But overall, it was it was okay for me the year the year. You thought you were able to learn well despite the distractions. Yes, I did. So I did. I think like very well with even like with the distractions because. Uh, it would just like happen for some s minutes or like seconds and then it would just go away. So it didn't like impact that much badly on my learning. Of course, there are distractions even in, in a building. Mm -hmm. So, and do you want to now tell us a little bit about what you do in LIPS? Uh, yes. What, what does it stand for? So LIPS stands for like the community in itself so it's like we sometimes we go around um to help people with translation jobs for the community itself we sometimes for example if a hospital needs uh, translators we go there to help them and because of that we receive training on how to translate how to be better translators and most of us in the group are immigrants are people that don't speak English as their native language. So then it's like a really good thing because we then can do a helping uh, jobs. To Speaking of things like right. turning off my phone, go ahead. All right, Senator Jalen, that's one, one discount point on you. Everyone. I was just trying to demonstrate that online programs have interruptions and distractions. <laughs> I, just, I wanted to be realistic. All right, we'll buy that. We'll okay. buy that. Okay. Sorry, Dow, go ahead. Okay. Um, and because we are, most of us, like immigrants, and we don't natively speak English, we go to the LIPS program and it's like a literal classroom. We learn how to be translators. We learn how to translate to others. And we also learn how to help the community in itself with protests or participating in community events. And also, and we participated like every Friday, like um, from 3.30 and until 5.30. 
And during also those times, we receive a payment for it because it's kind of like a job because we're being paid to train to be translators, but we are also doing other jobs. Like I already said, we can translate to a community event, we can help people in the hospitals, uh, or we could also go to school events and translate for other students or parents that don't speak English as their nature language. So it's a really like, um, a program for the community itself to make everyone being accepted and everyone welcome. And at the same time, you're learning skills and confidence that will really be helpful to you in your future life that I feel like one of the reasons, one, one thing I would like to see in school more is for kids to actually be contributing to their communities like each of you is through your outside program. So I hope there's more of that gonna be going on in our schools so that kids uh, begin to transition into being adults and contributing to the community. There's a lot of kids already doing that and you deserve a lot of credit. Um, great, Kate, do you wanna talk about um, your life as a, as a junior and as a member of Positive Forces and uh, what- Yeah, sure. So, yeah, uh, this year has definitely been much different than any other year in the past. Um, some positives, some negatives. I mean, sitting in front of a computer for hours on end, both in school and then for homework is pretty draining. It can be fatiguing, monotonous. Um, but really, it, it hasn't been so bad. I mean, I've been able to keep in touch with a lot of my friends, check in with them, even though we can't really spend time in person. I mean, um, it being remote, you kind of miss that um, ingrained social time that you have at the high school where, you know, you're talking with people in between classes and at lunch and before and after school. So you really have to take the time to reach out, reach out to people. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of work, I feel like I'm doing okay. Um, learning probably just as much as I would have been in regular school. Obviously the formatting is different. Um, and courses are challenging, but getting through it. Um, and in terms of stuff outside of school, I think actually being remote um, for different extracurriculars and things has been really great because my commute is really just to my desk, to my laptop in my room, which has been really nice. And I don't have to factor in commute time anywhere. Um, and it's really easy just to sign up for things online for webinars and different meetings. Um, and I've actually, had more opportunities to do other things outside of school that I probably wouldn't have been able to otherwise because it, it's just so accessible. Um, so that's been a really nice feature, but obviously there have been struggles, but I think it's really good to look on the positive side of things and uh, think about how much we've been getting out of this unique experience. Well, that's why you're part of Positive Forces, but you want yeah. to see what that is? Yeah, Somerville Positive Forces, it's a group of youth um, that primarily focus on, focuses on youth tobacco prevention in our community and substance abuse prevention, but we also work on other health issues in our city, um, primarily mental health. Um, and yeah, we've been doing some projects. We just went to Kick Butts Day, which is um, an event hosted by the Statewide 84 Movement, which I'm actually a part of this year. Um, I'm on their statewide team. But um, we attended that, we talked to legislators about issues in our community like here. And right now we're working on um, an event that we're gonna be hosting in June where we're gonna be going over the student health survey data from the high school from last year um, and talking about other things that we can improve in our community in terms of health and wellness for our students. Well, actually I got the idea for this show because the kids from the middle school kick butts, butts they came to talk to me about their work and yeah. I was so impressed that I wanted I wanted more such voices to be heard. I wanted to say something about the extracurricular though that I um, my granddaughters uh, one of their their favorite things um, have been music and drama and those are not easy to do online so mm -hmm. I think there are lots I think what you said that there are there are positives and negatives, and I am just so impressed that each of you has found a way to, to be engaged and active and that you feel that like you've been 
getting your education despite the barriers. Although when Jace mentioned that um, the problems with internet, do you all know how many kids in, in Somerville have trouble uh, accessing internet either because they have poor reception or because there's too many people trying to use their connection or what what do you all hear from from your friends because you're all part of groups where you would know what what people's experience is Joao? um so i guess like um from what i can see in classes um like a less than half of the class i would say about like an estimate of like 25 percent of the people me included sometimes the internet connection it's not really that good or like you have problems with the computers trying to turn it off or it's like the camera doesn't work and when you turn it on it's like it just makes it worse for the internet connection so it's really like um, some people have that problem, but it's not like everyone. It's a minority of the people. But like oh, I can't. That. That's important, though. So, so right, that it's important that a lot. Uh, to me, twenty five percent is a lot of kids, uh, and that's in Somerville where we usually have good connection uh, possibilities. I mean. In the House of Representatives, they can't hold meetings online that involve everyone because not every state representative in the state has good internet where they live. Isn't that, isn't that amazing to think about? Yeah, and, it's, if I can jump in here, Senator Jalen, it's not so amazing when you think about it, is that um, the cable companies and the phone companies and the internet companies typically will market to big population centers because that's where they'll get the most number of customers. If they don't have a discount program for a needs basis, that is the basic principle as to why a lot of households get locked out of having strong internet um, is because they don't have any kind of program for underserved households. And that's something that um, the Somerville Media Center, the school system, and a lot of the not-for-profits here in the city, we've been meeting about that very issue for the past three to four months to try to come up with a program. The city does currently have a program um, where if there is no internet or insufficient internet, um, they can call the city and see if there are funds available to improve the internet connectivity. I want to go back though, Senator Jalen. I spread that word. <laughs> I don't... They haven't got it ready yet. So oh. I, I'm just, I'm making sure that I'm going to say things correctly. And maybe on post editing of this show, we can put a link up as to where to go for that information. I wanted to ask a couple of questions though, before we get too much into um, how it's going. I want to take all three of you back to March of 2020. What was your initial reaction when they said, we're gonna to have to close the schools for a while? So J Jace, why don't we start with you? What was your initial reaction? What did you think? Um, at first, I got, I got really excited. I was just, cause I didn't really understand what was happening. So I was just really excited. I went outside and I played basketball, just like to, I was just really excited cause I was just, like, oh, this is going to be great. It's going to be a few days, maybe like a few weeks. Yeah. And yeah. A little, a little unexpected vacation. Is that what you yeah. thought? Yeah. Yeah. And here it is a year later, Jace. How are you adjusting? I mean, it sounds like you're doing okay on the learning part of it. How are you adjusting to the upheaval in your social life and your family life in just by virtue of the fact that you're a very young person? living through a pandemic. I mean, are you doing okay with this? Is there, go ahead. Yeah, I'm doing okay with it. Um, I develop, I know that I've developed a big social anxiety thing now. Like I, I'm gonna probably be nervous to go in places with big amounts of people or even small amounts of people. But um, 
yeah, it's been hard, like, not being able to see my friends as much. Um, but I still have seen them, like, we've, I've hung out with my friends, like, socially distanced and, like, outside, um, which, uh, and, like, the, yeah, which was nice. So, it's not been too bad, but it's also not been too good. All right. Kate, how about you? Yeah, so I remember the week, I think it was a Tuesday or a Wednesday that we first found out that we weren't going to be going back for about two weeks. I was actually on the crowded tea coming home from Boston. And um, yeah, I, I was just shocked. And I thought it was only going to be like two weeks off. Um, but then, you know, they kept saying, oh, we're not going to come back until April. Now we're going to come back until June. Now we're not going to come back until next year. Um, and yeah, it was just kind of crazy to keep hearing the, the new information, the new news. And um, it really hit me that this was going to be a big thing when I couldn't really see my friends anymore without, you know, wearing a mask um, and just realizing that, wow, that, that this is our reality. And um, yeah, now it, it's crazy to think that it's been over a year, so much has happened, um, but I th think that we're getting through it. And I think that there's a light at the end of the tunnel soon, so that's good. Thanks, Kate. Joe, what did you think? Great for an unexpected vacation or, oh Lord, I wanna stay in school and get this over with. So yeah, I had both of those mixed feelings because I was like, yes, we're not gonna have to go to school. I'm not gonna have classes. But then also at the same time, I was like, but I wanted to study. I was actually like between my friends, people were like, Joao, what do you mean you wanted to study? I was like, I like school. What do you mean? I like to learn new stuff. And everyone was like, Joao, you need some help. And I was like, no, it's like this is a bad thing that the school is like going to be closed because of this virus. And then like when I learned that we were going to have online classes, I was like, okay, how are we gonna work that out? And then when they started distributing the computers, I was like, oh, that's how. But when I learned that the school would be closed, I was like happy that it was like a, a sudden vacation out of the blue. But then I was like, but I want to still learn stuff. I, I, I just can't stop learning things. Well, speaking of learning, how, how do you think your educators are doing? How do you think your teachers are doing with remote learning? Anybody, just jump in. I think for some of the teachers, it's also difficult because um, some of them even stated to me like I have never done this before I have no idea how to set up the computer or the internet or like the space for having this type of thing and some teachers were even confused like oh well I, I don't even have like a proper space to put the Chromebook so for example my music teacher she had it to do like on her attic with her other music instrument because she didn't have other space or quiet for her to do that work or my math teacher where he like he had to bought a giant board to put on his office to then teach the class because he didn't have it before so it's like it's a really difficult situation for them to got it jace i want to ask you a question on on how you how you think your teachers are doing but i also want to ask you a question you're a freshman this year does that mean that you entered somerville high school in september of 2020 remotely yeah so yeah. you never had a chance to meet a lot of your classmates in september of 2020 you've only met them online yeah I mean, it was a good transition, though. Like, they made sure that it was very, like, easy as a transition. Like, because it, it would have been harder. Like, it would it would still be hard in general going into the building, like, as a transition from middle school to high school. But they made sure that it was very... They made sure that I met, like, with my counselor. And I, I, did, I think I met with a few of my teachers before. Um, so it, it was just very, like, smooth and very, like, well-organized. Yeah. All right. 
Kate, how do you think your educators are doing? None of them will watch this show. We won't let them watch this show. You can tell us. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that they're doing pretty well. Um, some of the older teachers don't have as much um, experience with technology. So that was kind of a learning curve for them. But um, re really, it's just been about adapting to the circumstances. Like, for example, um, a lot of my physics labs are online now with online simulations. We have to do stuff on our own. When in school, my teacher said that he would have been throwing balls down the stairwell and showing us all of these cool things, demonstrations. And so, you know, we're losing that aspect of of it but um honestly it's been fine i i really like having everything online um i just think it makes organization a lot easier and everything's right at your fingertips um but yeah i, I don't think the teaching is any better or any worse than it would have been in school one thing i've heard from people is that you don't have to get up as early uh is that helpful yeah definitely i've gotten so much more sleep I you also got, you I got smiles. You got smiles all around when you said they don't have to get out this early. I I had another um, question for you. A lot of talk is because the um, juniors and seniors don't have to pass uh, MCAS to graduate now, and I've always been interested in in MCAS uh, and whether that's a valuable thing or not. And I don't know if you know that. So for example, I think Jace is the only one that would normally take it next year. Is that right? Um, I don't know how valuable you think it has been for you, um, but many people didn't want kids to have to take it this year because uh, things that they will have very little time back in school. But I don't know if you know that this year, nobody has to take it. You have just have your par have your parents write a little note to the principal and say, my kid's not taking it. So you want to pass that work around? That would be nice. And if anybody says anything to the three of you, say, send her to jail and told me I didn't have to take it. That's right. And we, but uh, we, we will give you all a website that you can put on the thing. She'll just, write a note for you. Jow and no, is that a, but I, you know, that's my opinion that it's a waste of time this year. Um, and if you all, because kids, you all will not be back in school, but kids in three to grades, grades three to eight are gonna be back in school and they're not gonna have that much time in person. So anyway, I'm just be interested in your thoughts about that. If you didn't have to take it, would you take it? I would probably still take it just for like the challenge and just to see like I, if I had improved it from mm -hmm. the last time that I took it, if I don't remember correctly, I took it when I was a sophomore, mm -hmm. just to see like if I had some imp kind of improvement or things like that. Mm -hmm. Senator Jalen, you know how fast 28 minutes come, especially yeah. if you have interesting guests like we've had today. For Jace and Kate and Joao, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for the insights. And from me to all three of you, continue being leaders. The city needs leaders. So it's a difficult 13 months. Um, Zhao, sorry about not being able to give you one great, big, huge graduation this year, but I'm sure that the school system will make it special. Kate and Jace, continue on, do your best. Um, maybe you'll come back and um, be on another show with us. How's that sound? Senator Jalen, great job. Thank you so much. We're gonna to have to sign off. Okay. On behalf of the Somerville Media Center, I'm Joe Lynch. Thank you for watching. As always, please stay safe, stay informed. We'll see you next time.